so that we too may be able to align ourselves, our wills, with God's will and be able to say to God, yes to God. Heaven, 
But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of, Israel, o house of David, is it too little for you to weary the people, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child, and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel, for God is with us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here I am, Lord, here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Here I am, Lord, here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. You do not ask for sacrifice and offerings, but an open ear. You do not ask for holocaust and victim, instead here am I. Here I am, Lord, here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. In the scroll of the book it stands written that I should do your will. My God, I delight in your law, in the depth of here I am, Lord, here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Your justice I have proclaimed in the great assembly. My lips I have not sealed, you know it, O oh Lord. Here I am, Lord, here I am. Possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, As it is written of me in the scroll of the book, See, God, I have come to do your will, O God. When Christ said, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings, and burnt offerings and sin offerings, though these are offered according to the law. Then he added, See, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The word of God became flesh and lived among us, and we saw his glory. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Disciples of the Risen One, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the house give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. 
Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy, and he will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. In this, and this is the sixth month for her who is said to have been barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, I said at the beginning of the liturgy, we have this, it seems like an interruption of our Lent, but you know what, it's really not, it's really not, it fits perfectly with our whole Lenten journey, and especially in this last week as we prepare to celebrate the great feast of the Passion of our Lord on Sunday, where he comes into Jerusalem and to break, you know, the cheers of the crowds, and then later on, is the same crowd is, is shouting out, crucify him, crucify him. So uh, this fulfillment of, of, of this, of, of the promises to Israel through the passion of Jesus is actually ushered in by this great feast of the Annunciation. And so, uh, and why, why this is such a, an important thing? Well, because, you know, it's funny, we, we think of sort of Christmas as the beginning of our salvation, but in fact, here is the beginning of our salvation. Here it is, here. And so it's almost like a, a wake-up call for the coming festivities of, of Passion of the Lord, and then, of course, you know, the, his, the entire of Holy Week, uh, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and, of course, then Easter Sunday. So let's take a, a look at, at the readings themselves, because they, they do sort of um, prepare us for what's coming. And in particular, the letter to the Hebrews, um, this really does show what Christ did and why his coming was so significant, why this particular feast is so central and, and really is the celebration of the beginning of our salvation because, let's face it, what Israel had been doing is performing sacrifice after sacrifice, the sacrifice of, of burnt offerings and sin offerings, and as, as the letter to the Hebrews, the author says, you need the desire in these, in, or no, take pleasure in these sacrifices. Why? Because they don't do anything. They don't expiate. They don't do what they're intended to do. What people wanted was to be reconciled with God. And why they were not reconciled with God was because of their own sinfulness. And so, indeed, Christ comes, and according to the letter of the Hebrews, He's the one who becomes the great high priest, who offers the ultimate sacrifice. And get this, probably the most important line, uh, and it is by God's will that we've been sanctified, you and I have been sanctified by God's, by, by God's will, through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ, and this is it, once for all. That's exactly what we celebrate whenever we celebrate the Eucharist. We celebrate this, which is the sacrifice, once for all. We participate in that same sacrifice, the same single sacrifice that took place, once for all. And so you see, our salvation has been established. The, the way that was done is through this wonderful story uh, that was narrated through the Gospel of Luke, where the angel Gabriel comes to this young woman who is betrothed, we're told she's betrothed to Joseph, a man, Joseph, who was of the house of David, so already fulfilling the prophecies, and that her name was Mary and that she was just a really a young woman. And the angel appears to her and says, Hail, full of grace. So that's not so much, uh, we're so used to, especially if you pray the rosary, so used to saying, you know, Hail Mary, full of grace. But what it means, the, great, the word grace is, is the Greek word charis, which is really God's gift of life. Hail, you who have been, blessed are you, blessed are you, who are gifted with God's gift of, of God's own divine life. Blessed are you. The Lord is with you. And we're told that Mary was much perplexed by these words. Now, she wasn't uh, disbelieving. 
She was just simply perplexed. Well, you can imagine. She is a human being. And this angel appears and says to her, be happy because God is, is filling you with his life-giving grace. And the angel says to her, don't be afraid, Mary. You found favor with God. And then she, he begins to tell Mary all about who this child will be. That he's not an ordinary child. His name will be Jesus, right? Yeshua, God with us. And he will be great and be called the Son of the Most High. So already, using a title that would have been, that could have been referring to the Messiah himself, but then goes on and really establishes that that's what he's talking about. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David. That's exactly what the Messiah was expected to do. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom will be, there will be no end to his kingdom. So again, this is really pointing to the fact that this child is not only just a special child, not only blessed by God, the way Samson was, say, for instance, but more than that, he is the Messiah. And so Mary says to the angel, well, how can this be? She's merely stating the fact. She's perplexed. How can this be? I'm a virgin. And he says, the angel says to her, the Holy Spirit will come over you, will overshadow you, so will come over you, and the power of the Most High will create this child. This child will be holy, and he'll be called Son of God. And then the most significant thing, and why this really has to do with our Lent, is Mary begins our salvation journey, um, begins our, with the establishment of our salvation, because we've been on this journey for a long time. As you'll see when we celebrate the vigil, we go through all of salvation history throughout the Old Testament, from Genesis onwards. But Mary uh, establishes it by this. The one part that she plays that's most significant, she says, fiat, be it done unto me according to your will. That's what fiat, fiat means, is the Latin for be it done, be it done. Be it done unto me according to your will. So in other words, yes, Lord, yes. She says yes to God. And not understanding. I mean, that's what's made clear. She's perplexed, according to, the, the, uh, according to Luke. She's perplexed. But even so, not understanding, not having to know everything, not having to be secure, not, ha not being able to have all her questions answered, she says a faithful yes to God. Whatever it is, God, I trust you. Now, that's exactly what you'll see Jesus doing the same thing. Jesus. In fact, she's, what Mary is doing is even before Jesus is born, she's modeling discipleship, perfect discipleship, because that's exactly what Jesus did. Jesus gives a perfect yes, empties himself, and empties himself before God, to God, to God the Father on the cross, and in doing so, wins our salvation. And that is what you and I are expected to imitate, saying yes to God. This is the hardest thing a human being will ever have to do, will be in the face of not knowing, of not having complete security. And we are not good at not having security. If you have any doubt about that, look at what COVID did. It proved to us that unless we have all our ducks lined up, we don't feel secure. So the hardest thing to do in the middle of that kind of a situation is to say, okay, God, I don't know everything. I don't have all the answers. I'm not even sure about my future. But whatever it is, I trust you. I say yes to you. So that is what each of us is called to do. So this week, in the time that's left before we celebrate the Feast of the Passion, now's your chance. Because you'll see in the Passion narrative that indeed all the disciples are tested whether or not they're willing to say yes. Are they willing to spend time with Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane? They fall asleep. The Lord says to them, can't you even stay awake with me for an hour? They say yes, but they don't follow through. And then uh, Peter, who insists that he will, he will be faithful no matter what. He'll protect the Lord. He'll stand by his side. But we know what happens with Peter. Poor old Peter. So that's really what Lent was all about for the last you know, several weeks that we've been going through this season. is to really hone us for the ability to be able to say yes to God. To fine-tune us. So, as we prepare to celebrate the Feast of the Passion, take a look in your own life. Where are you hedging your bets? Why are you not saying yes to God? And you know, the best way to do that is to say, okay, what things would I say to God? You can have everything but this. Ah, the big but is the thing. Anything, anything that you say after the but is the stuff that you've got to look and say, 
but even that, Lord. I say yes, even to, even to giving that over to you. So whatever it is, whether it's uh, something, whether it's wealth or pleasure or power or honor, not that there's anything wrong with these things, but simply that they cannot become, they can't be ahead of your yes to God. They cannot be your God. And neither can human beings for that matter. No matter who you love, that person cannot be in the way of your yes to God. So think about that. Be, be as open in your heart as Mary was, imitating Jesus, who will later say yes also, a complete yes, which gains us our salvation. That's how important that is. So be, be honest with yourself this week and look for that, whatever it is that is preventing you from saying a full, wholehearted yes to God. And then ask God for the grace Help him to help you be holy and to give you the grace to be able to transform whatever that is into a yes to God. So together on this special feast let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, and become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, with your goodness. We receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine of the human hand, and become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. God, we ask you, please, please, your true home and contract friends. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me of all my sins. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Look with favor, Lord. Be pleased, Almighty God, to accept your church's offering 
so that she, who is aware that her beginning, that her beginnings lie in the incarnation, your only begotten Son, may rejoice to celebrate his mysteries on this solemnity. He who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the Virgin Mary heard with faith that the Christ was to be born among men, and for men's sake. By the overshadowing power of the Holy Spirit, lovingly she bore him in her immaculate womb, that the promises to the children of Israel might come about, and the hope of nations be accomplished beyond all telling. Through him the hosts of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices we pray join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son, I am the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son, I am the highest. O Son, I am the highest. You are indeed holy, Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you, In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by a cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Albert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, your spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Glorious Martyrs, Saint Bernadette of Lourdes, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Throw him with him in him. O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, our failures to love you and each other. Instead, look on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Offer each other a sign of peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis pecat caudi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis pecat caudi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis pecat caudi, non a nobis pace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to this world. Free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments, and never let me be parted from you. Behold, the Lamb of God, Son of God and Son of Mary, who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. So for those of you who are worshiping at home with me right now, I offer to lead you in your prayer for communion by Zion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. 
I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come, at least spiritually, into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Confirm in our minds the mysteries of the true faith, we pray, O Lord, so that confessing that he who was conceived of the Virgin Mary is true God and true man, we may, through the saving power of his resurrection, merit to attain eternal joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's solemn blessing. Be gracious to your people, Lord, we pray, that as from day to day they reject what does not please you, they may be filled instead with delight at your commands. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, go in peace. Glorify the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God.